What's going on guys? G2 here. Welcome back to the channel. And today I have a, a very requested video for you all. We've done builds throughout the history of this channel. We've done tips, tricks, all of those things. And the one thing that every successful build, assembly, installation comes down to is proper torque. So today in this video, we're going to go through every possible part of the AR platform system in regards to torque. So if you're watching this video and you're not subscribed, you missed out on a lot of stuff. But you know what? That's fine. We're going to cover it all in today's video. And uh, just take a minute, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted and you don't miss anything else going forward. If you're currently a subscriber and you've been with us for a while, thank you very much. I appreciate you. Welcome back. So let's head down to the bench and let's go over everything you need to know about torque and how it relates to the AR-15 platform system. All right, so here we are. We're going to use our AR-9 as an example here. What we'll do is we'll start at the stock and work our way to the muzzle. So as we're starting on the stock, the first thing or first part that we're going to engage is our castle nut. So your castle nut here is torqued based on the length of your gas system. So if you're using a rifle length gas system, you're you actually will not have a castle nut. You will have a buffer tube that screws in. Okay, this is the difference between uh, a carbine and shorter and a rifle. So if you have a rifle length, that uh, tube should be set to 35 to 39 foot pounds. Now, if you're doing a carbine length or a shorter, you want to have this castle nut set to 38 to 42 foot-pounds in addition to staking in two places. I want to be very clear on that. Carbine is 38 to 42 foot-pounds. A lot of you have referenced the manual that was put out by the U.S. Army and it is an old model that actually has a typo in there and they use inch-pounds. That's incorrect. It is a typo. It has since been revised. So moving forward, we're going to get to our grip screw. In addition to using the washer that comes with it, should be torqued to 15 to 20 inch pounds. Now we're not in foot pounds anymore, we're in inch pounds. So let's make sure we notate that. As we move forward to the main body of the receiver, the only screw, and not counting components or accessories, would be your bolt carrier screws. Now there's two on here and they should be set to 50 to 58 inch pounds in addition to being staked on either side. You can see there how they're staked. This is in addition to that 50 to 58 inch pound uh, minimum spec. Moving forward, we come to our barrel nut, which is underneath our hand guard right here. Now the barrel nut should be started at 30 foot pounds. That is the minimum. But remember with this, you have to rotate it to the point where this gas tube can go through and enter your receiver. So your range that you're shooting for is 30 foot pounds minimum, but you are not to exceed 80 foot pounds total whatever gets you to that next alignment hole to allow your gas tube to go through. So there's a lot of deviation here for you to uh, get this really nice and tuned. Now as we move into about right here where our gas block would be, our gas block set screws should be set to 25 to 30 inch pounds. In addition to that torque rating, you should also be dimpling your barrel or 
pinning your gas block. I know it sounds like you're putting double work into that, but don't rely on those set screws to hold that gas block in place. That is a, a rookie mistake. So now we're gonna move on to your compensator or flash hider. Now when you install this, you're gonna use one of two assisting devices, a crush washer or a peen washer. Depending on what you're using, you can use either one of those, but you got to use one in order to set this correctly. So once you have that in there, you're then going to have to tune it appropriately and get it rotated correctly so that it's oriented um, appropriately inside the barrel. So in order to do that, you have a range of 15 to 20 foot pounds that you're going to want to eventually get as your final torque on that uh, muzzle device. Now, let's say you're using a suppressor. Uh, your suppressor muzzle is going to be set to the same spec, but instead of using a peen washer or a crush washer, you're going to use uh, shims. In addition to that, you're also going to use rock set. You do not use any Loctite on any of this, ever. So there are some other screws that we're going to talk about next, and I'm going to caveat this by saying what I'm going to tell you are general guidelines. Always refer to the manufacturer's manual for installation on proper torque settings. The thing with torquing these smaller screws here is they're thin. And one of two things can happen if you over torque it. You can obviously strip out the screw, which is in and, in and of itself uh, a really horrible day. Or you can do one even worse and totally shear the head off by tightening it too much which is equally as bad, I would say. But as a general rule, these handguard screws should be set 20 to 30 inch pounds, unless otherwise specified. Now we get into like our uh, key mod screws and our M locks and all of those individual parts. So when you're dealing with your M lock, your key mod, or your Picatinny attachments. It all depends and it all is based on the materials that you're doing. So if you're doing a polymer to a metal, typically your handguard is gonna be metal, the attachment is gonna be polymer, you wanna have that at 15 inch pounds. If you're doing polymer to polymer, uh, what you're gonna do also 15 inch pounds. That's to the polymer, you don't wanna deform that, so that's why the good rule of thumb is 15 inch pounds anytime polymer is involved. Now, if you're going straight metal to metal, so like for this hand guard or this hand stop right here, metal to metal, that you can take up to 35 inch pounds. Now, when we go into Picatinny, polymer to metal is again, 15 inch pounds. That polymer is the standard. As soon as you are attaching anything polymer to anything metal or polymer to anything in general, 15 inch pounds is your maximum. Now, if you're going polymer to polymer, again, 15 inch pounds. Finally, if you're doing a metal to metal in Picatinny, so for example, like a mount for an optic, you can go up to 30 inch pounds. Now, this may differ by uh, manufacturer. You wanna make sure you pay attention to what their specified range is. It's not gonna be any less than 30, but the the fault most people fall into here is this screw is going to break off way before you damage anything in terms of the Picatinny attachment. So when it comes to these components, always refer to the instructions and specifications from the manufacturer. What I'm simply doing is giving you a baseline here. So the next question is, what do I need to ensure that I can get this done appropriately? Well, I've been talking about it and I talk about it all the time. Right here. This is the fat wrench by Wheeler Engineering. And what this does is this allows you to work in inch pounds, which a lot of these smaller components are. And you can adjust the gauge as to the strength that you're making your, uh, your tightening with. So this is invaluable, in my opinion. And you have a variety of uh, options that you can use, you know, flatheads, uh, Allens, Torx. 
You can actually put socket adapters on here as well. It's your standard kind of uh, hex adapter here, so you can put anything in there that you want. If you if it doesn't come with what you want, you can go buy the bit like you would for a normal screwdriver or uh, drill bit, whatever it is. The other thing that you're going to need, specifically when we're talking about castle nuts, barrel nut, and your muzzle device, is you're going to want to invest in a torque wrench. Now this works in foot pounds. So now you can see we have our inch pounds covered with our fat wrench and our foot pounds covered with our torque wrench. And what this does, simple adjustments here on the back, you can change the inch pounds or the foot pounds to whatever you want. And then you can use this in conjunction with, let's say, an armor's wrench, right? This fits right into the armor's wrench here so that you can control that torque. So in terms of tools, you're definitely going to want to get a torque screwdriver that works in inch pounds, a torque wrench that works in foot pounds, and you should always have an armor's wrench if you're working on ARs. And if you have those three things, you'll be able to assemble this absolutely no problem and uh, have no issues and no need for Loctite. All right, so I know, guys, that was a ton of information, but this is a highly requested video. We talk about this all the time. And if there's one thing on the channel that I stress is it doing it the right way the first time. Taking shortcuts, while it may save you a little bit of time, now in the future you're going to lose that in more time more materials more labor more money and that is just not good uh overall so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you got a lot out of it if you missed some things it's no big deal check it out in the description i'm going to have all of the details in there so if you need to refer back to this do whatever you got to do so until next time make sure that you're practicing safe weapons handling at all times and treating every weapon as if it was loaded and assembling them to proper spec guidelines. God bless America. G2 out.